Let's spend about 10 minutes talking Kansas State football, basketball, and recruiting on KSO Today, a free daily podcast brought to you by K-State Online. It is Derek Young of K-State Online, and you're listening to KSO Today. It's February 11th, 2020, 2020, the year of the Kansas State Wildcats. I know everyone is probably hoping so to, to begin today. I'm Derek Young, and I'm going to a little bit jump into, I know Matt Hall probably already did, but kind of discuss a little bit of the Jaden Williams uh, trip we made uh, coming back from the Iowa State game where the Wildcats fell to the Cyclones the following day when we were driving back to Manhattan. We made a stop in West Des Moines, Iowa at Valley High School to conduct a video interview with, with Jaden, and certainly he's the newest, you know, the most latest commit for the Kansas State Wildcats, an athlete, a three-star athlete. And every bit of his listed size. Um, I'm a, probably a hair over six foot, and he was, you know, probably half an inch taller than me. So he's pushing six one, maybe a little bit over that, and probably hovers around the 200 to 205 pound mark right now. Um, mm-hmm. Someone that you know definitely could you know finish out at least in college around you know six one, six two area. And impossible to be 225, 230 pounds. Uh, uh, I don't know that it would go much more than that, but certainly uh, not a lot of hyperbole in, in where he's listed at listed at size wise. Uh, it was a good trip. Uh, personality wise, again, another really good interview that was very open and genuine and and endearing. Uh, and, and kind of uh, charismatic, I think, is the word, much like when we spoke to Jake Rubley when we took the trip to Denver at Highlands Ranch High School in Colorado. So uh, two really good personalities we've, we've ran into. And just some interesting notes on that. He did confirm, Jane Williams did, that he did you know, take that visit right before he committed with no coaches in town. It was just Taylor Brack conducting the visit, although Jaden had been to Manhattan before and spoke to the coaches when he visited for the Iowa State game uh, back in November. It was a, a really cold, cold night. Jake Rubley talked about that visit as well. They were both there and kind of met each other at, at that point. Um, uh, and and actually, there's a he's wearing the sweatshirt in the video, but the sweatshirt it's a Valley High School sweatshirt that J.D. Williams is wearing, and part of the sweatshirt has the V and it looks like the, the University of Virginia logo, but it's the Valley High School logo, but it looks like University of Virginia. And Jaden actually shared a story where he was seen in, the, in that sweatshirt at another point in time. And Jake Rubley, you know, another K-State commit, four-star quarterback, told him, you know, take that trash off. So obviously, so here's some banter and some discussion in those two are certainly starting to form a relationship as well. And so you don't always just want the, the relationships to be between coach and player or coach and commit or coach and recruit. It's good to kind of form the, those bonds within the class and have them between commits as well. And I think we're starting to see that take place. I know Jaden also mentioned that he had, had spoken to Dorian Stevens a little bit, even though they had, he didn't talk to any of the commits before he made his decision he has since then. Uh, moving on a little bit more recruiting information or, or recruiting discussion debate um just me listening to myself talk and hopefully you guys listening as well guys and gals but uh i kind of wanted to touch on a little bit the recruitment of, of wide receiver keegan johnson of bellevue nebraska i know most are going to assume that he's going to end up with the corn huskers his father played for the corn huskers and he lives just you know not too far from from the nebraska corn husker campus so you have to think that Scott Frost isn't going to let something of this nature get away, especially even though the results on the field haven't been what they wanted yet in Lincoln. Scott Frost has been known to be a good recruiter and has already shown to be a good recruiter while he's at Nebraska. However, there might be some wiggle room to be had when it comes to Keegan. He just visited Kansas State, uh, Iowa as well, I believe. Um, Those are two schools that are probably going to have more of a chance than people think. We just did an update on Keegan on kstateonline.com it's a premium information and and it certainly has some really good nuggets in there so if you aren't a member i always say that i encourage you to do so that's another product where i think if you want to read that or would have interest in that you would see that your subscription would be well worth it just for that piece of information and just for that update because he is certainly 
uh, someone to keep in mind when it comes to the Kansas State recruiting efforts. They're looking a little bit at wide receivers in this class more than they did the last one. Of course, another uh, a candidate to be a wide receiver in this class, someone that they really like, another top target amongst the wide receivers that Jason Ray is pursuing is Jalen Knoll, um, a Kansas City Metro standout that certainly has Kansas State amongst his favorites as well. So he is someone to keep in mind. Those are two receivers that if, if you want to follow recruiting or, or, or if you are a big recruiting nerd or want to follow recruiting, um, those are two names where you, you probably want to know, need to know uh, when it comes to the wide receivers. Um, I think we'll finish just with a little little preview between the Kansas State Wildcats. They play tonight, Tuesday night against the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Uh, Kansas State 9-14 and coming into this game, but Mike Boynton and the and the crew in Stillwater they are have a losing record as well at 11 and 12. Um, they'll they'll start probably Isaac Likely, Jonathan Laurent, Keelan Boone, Cameron McGriff, and Yoren Nay. The big story for Oklahoma State will be that they'll bring in Cade Cunningham a year from now, but that won't help them tonight in Manhattan. Uh, Cartier Jada, David Sloan, we still don't know who will start a point guard for K State. That that's still to be determined. They've kind of gone back and forth like that. Of course, Cardi started in Ames and did pretty well. So we'll see if they stick to that plan. In terms of uh, pace, if you want to look at these two teams, they're both middle of the road of the Big 12, pretty pretty similar in that way. Um, probably the only time you'll see, you'll hear us any of us say going into a game this the rest of this year is K State probably has the advantage. If you look at the stats, both from an offensive and defensive perspective. Um, they, they, their Oklahoma State's defense against you know opposing teams. They're allowing over 52 percent effective field goal percentage, which is fairly high. Um, the same way Oklahoma State's letting teams get to the line even more than K K State is getting to the line. Um, teams make twos against the Cowboys too, which they're defending twos as ninth in the league in the Big 12 while Kansas State's fifth in the league at, at converting them. So um, just a few of those stats kind of actually favor Kansas State's offense in this one, and you certainly won't hear that much when it comes to Big 12 play. Um, one, one, one department where Oklahoma State probably does have an edge when it comes to defending K-State is uh, Oklahoma State doesn't allow a ton of offensive rebounds. Kansas State doesn't get a ton. So um, that that will be hard or a little, a little bit more difficult in this one in terms of getting second chance points if you're the Wildcats. Now in Kansas State's defending Oklahoma State, Oklahoma State probably not as lopsided in this one, which is a little interesting. You, obviously, you think K-State is a better defensive team than an offensive team, and they certainly are, but Oklahoma State is a better offensive team than they are a defensive team, so they can kind of keep up uh, in this phase of the game, especially when it comes to offensive rebounds. Kansas State allows quite a bit of offensive rebounds when it comes to the rate and percentage that they've had this season, and Oklahoma State will get them. They're, they're, they're probably at the halfway point in the league of getting them. Kansas State's, you know, almost last when it comes to allowing them, which isn't, you know, the best sign moving forward. Um, however, Kansas State working in their favor is, Oklahoma State's one of the worst shooting teams when it comes to effective field goal percentage, and they're the worst at three-point percentage. Oklahoma State um, probably not afraid to shoot the three, but they're not going to convert on many, um, even not as good as the Wildcats are in that respect. So if you're looking at the rest of this year, this is probably the most winnable game left on the Kansas State schedule. Bruce Weber and company, if they are going to try to make this season a little bit more respectable than it's been, this is a home game against Oklahoma State, uh, is probably one you can't let get away. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I would predict a Kansas State win. Uh, but who knows what the way this year has gone. It certainly uh, could go a multitude of directions. Uh, you've been listening to KSO today, I assume. Matt Hall will be back on KSO Today for K-State Online tomorrow, February 12th. Today's February 11th, 2020, and you've been listening to KSO Today.